Once I could kill with either hand, but you can lose it all, that quickly. Again and again, precisely the same force, and then a hundred again is a thousand. Agility is the most crucial need, the need to be quick. I take to the trees, higher than the birds. They don't mind. Do they chase me, or am I chasing them? Higher and higher, I do it in case I am called. David. David, it's Ma. Can you hear me? The wound has torn your stomach apart. The doctors don't think we can save you unless radical techniques are attempted. Now, even if they succeed, you may be nothing more than a vegetable. I promise I won't let that happen. I'll kill you myself. But I have an idea. If we can bring you back, you have one tremendous advantage. Everyone else thinks you're dead. There is an island. I'll be the only one who knows. I may never send for you, but if I do, it will be because, well, horrible things are happening. I was supposed to fly to these coordinates and pick up a certain party. You it? I'm it. This must be for you. Name's Kilgore. Oh, I've had some nutty assignments in my time, but this is Twilight Zone territory. Go with us, Cretton. He will take you to a mist of fountain. And if you think Kilgore is limited, just wait. The caliber of employees has not exactly skyrocketed of late. For your new face, you need a new name. Mr. V. Bede. Like it? What's the date? 28th. Of? Of? You mean the month? All of it. Brothers by William Goldman, dramatized by Stephen Keyworth. Eight years would have been no surprise. Ten wouldn't have thrown me, but this? On the plane, I read to catch up. Brezhnev is gone, Carter is gone. There's a celebrity in the White House with his finger on the nuclear button. At least Clint Eastwood is still making films. And New Orleans. New Orleans never changes. Mr. Bede, I understand you're interested in joining division. I was just told to come here. Here. Open it. Some explication is in order. It's a dossier, followed by questions, essay, and multiple choice. How would you break this man if time was no object? How would you break him in an hour? And so on. There's over a hundred pages. Pretend you're in college and I am your grader. Get by me. It's off to Washington with you. You have 24 hours. You better get started. Uh, Mr. Beat, perhaps we could both do with a break later. Do you like jazz? Sure. Span your hall. It's not far from your hotel. Meet me there. Around 11? Thank you, Mr. Fountain. I set it up. He'll leave his hotel before 11. Who is this clown? He looks strong. Then let me handle him. I don't see why I've been stuck with an assistant. Put the claws away, pussycat. This claws custom made, I could tear you in half. <laughs> is that right? Gentlemen, please. I don't know why they sent two of you, but the decision came from the top. Perkins himself. Can we cause him pain? How can you even ask such a question? Hey! What? Spin it. I'm letting him fall. Not till I'm finished. <coughs> I got the cash. Let's go. Division. Perkins, please. Call tomorrow. This is Fountain. Call tomorrow. I have orders. I'm phoning about Bede, and I don't expect... Hello? Well, that was... This is Fountain. Fountain, I called you on your private number, so the fact that it is you speaking comes under the heading of information I already possess. It's about B. Again, you are giving me information I already know. Well, we tested him. The Cheetah and Hondo are here. The way this ought to have gone, Fountain, is thusly. Sir, I'm calling about the test, and it went. And then you add one word. Disastrously. Sir? Hmm. He came wonderfully recommended. 
Perhaps there is a reason for his performance. I wouldn't know. Since I've got Cheetah and Hondo with me, perhaps they could go to the hotel and finish him off? Is that a thought I heard, Pilot? Sorry, sir. When are you seeing him? Tomorrow afternoon. Be surreptitious. See if there is some explanation for this evening's festivities. And if there isn't? Sir, what shall I do? Do? Do your worst. Bead, you missed some great jazz. Apologies, I was caught up in this. You didn't go out at all? A quick walk, just to clear my head. You had a headache? No. You were tired from the flight? Jet lag? No, I walked around the block. Twice, then back to my test. Were you followed, do you think? I wouldn't know. Well, be on the lookout. I'll run these answers through the computer. Be in your suite at nine, prompt. Thank you, Mr. Fountain. Miracle, he's walking at all. Wouldn't be if I'd done the hit. Save your bickering for afterwards. Weird. Doesn't use the air conditioning. Maybe we should close the windows, turn it on. Very good. Why don't we put little signs on the door saying, Oh, Bede, we're here. Yeah, I hate that we were on the same side. I hate it more. Bede has a suite. So? So, we don't know which door he'll come in. You stay here. I'll take next door. Whichever door he opens, that's it. What does that mean? It means I don't want you getting in my way, then claiming how, how great you were to find him later. There's a problem. I don't think you can handle him alone. Well, my problem is I don't get to handle you alone. Genius at work. God damn it, get back to your own room. You count your blessings there, man. Who's there? Oh. Huh? Hondo. No gains, idiot. Huh? Idiot. I told them that she doesn't need an assistant. Beat it. You bead. The closet. Come out here and face me. Bead. Why don't you join me outside? I like to leave a window open for a quick exit. Who are you? Sir. No, you're dead. No, you are. You didn't call. Beat. I waited. I'm really anxious to know how my test came out. Uh, uh, take a seat. You did fabulously. Honestly, I was so engrossed. You know what I think, Mr. Fountain? What? Recess is over. What is that? I believe it's a claw. Custom made. Both? Yes. Who are you? Fountain, what were you told to do in the event that I didn't die? Who runs Washington now? Perkins. Make contact. It's Fountain. This is Fountain. Where is your memory, man? We went through this yesterday. Uh, sorry, sir. I have bead here. Vertical or horizontal? Quite alive, sir. And the other two? They're... In retirement. Let me speak with him. <clears throat> Hello, Ma. So, you survived. Apparently. All of your Louisiana adventure was done under my orders. There was no point in bringing you to D.C. until I was sure you were worth bringing. Understood. I had to try to have you killed, is the subtext. And I hope you won't find it in your hard little heart to hold it against me. I like to think I'm bigger than that. 
Now you realize your greatest virtue is your face. Everyone's unfamiliarity with it. I do. Obviously, Fountain has seen you. May I give you a suggestion? I already did. I read some more. This world is unrecognizable to the one I left, but Perkins' sense of humor is the same, twisted. Twenty minutes across the airport to a locker, knowing that inside will be a key to another locker at the railway station. At the railway station, a new name. John Clayton. As in Tarzan. I thought it fitting, given your recent sabbatical. Why not Robinson Crusoe? <laughs> Please, let's be serious. How does this sound? On three pieces of seeded rye bread, I propose the following. Corned beef, pastrami, tongue, coleslaw, Russian dressing. I see you've got your anorexia well in hand. <laughs> it's a constant battle. One thing bothers me. Ease your mind. We have eradicated half the civilized world, getting me secretly to D.C. So why is it safe my being here in your home? Because it is my home. Because it comes fitted with distortion windows. No one gets here easily. My sister lives down the road along with several of our people. If someone came for me here, I may not defeat them, but they would not take me unawares. Excuse me. Felicity unwell? You don't know, do you? I'm a bit out of touch, Ma. I was driving us home three years ago. Five minutes away. Drunk out of my skull. Things went a bit awry. I suffered scratches, Felicity, everything. And please don't feel compelled to say I'm sorry. I am sorry enough for all of us. About your brother? I didn't ask. But you wouldn't mind hearing? No, Ma. I wouldn't mind at all. I read about him this very afternoon. I couldn't risk a printout. Thomas B. Levy, Associate Professor of History at Columbia. Two books, well received, one on McCarthy, a second on the failings of the Supreme Court. And I suspect that his wife may be brighter than he is. Fantastic. Who is she? Melissa Biesenthal, daughter of the head of the history department, a philologist. Teaches in New York, travels internationally, consulting on various... Excuse me. I'm sorry, Felicity, darling. I'm going to have to roll you over. That me. No, oh, please, there's no need. Just trying to speed things up, Ma. I can do this, Scylla. I do it every night. Get me another diaper, why don't you? And a towel and gown. Good of you, Dad. Oh, no, stop. Most people don't like going near her when she's like that, just my sister and myself. I count that good company. Why did you bring me back? There's much to cover, but the subtext is this. There's going to be a world war. America is going to start it. And counting you, three of us know. Let's uh, switch to scotch. Do you know what the black guayas are? The only reason for visiting Madrid. Then you know that that is the one time in all of our history when a genius allowed himself to deal solely with the darker side of our nature. In our own way, that is what we're doing too, a division. What do you know about weapons? I know the wars don't kill people, weapons do. Very good. Any weapon system is useless once the enemy has it. But what if we had something that no one else had? We did, back in the 40s, the bomb. We didn't use it after the war was over, and I don't think we'd act any differently today. Six months ago, you would have been right. Even three. But now, right now, at this precise period, the pendulum has swung. How can you be so sure? Toy dolls. Toy dolls are the tea leaves of war, and only I can read them. Now, everyone knows wars are bad for your health, but they happen and they happen. Why? I ran computer tests on everything conceivable. I'm talking years, so. And then, I stumble onto this. The rising tide of patriotism in America paralleled a phenomenal growth in toy dolls. Action figures. Say the word, Ken and Barbie a history. <laughs> it's rough, yes. But it worked in every case I could sample. 
Germany in 36 here before Korea everywhere. They're surrogate fighting figures. Only soon they become reality. How soon? The window for starting a war is small. If we can delay things, we can regain control. Am I to delay things? That is our hope. All right. Beveridge is in on this, of course. Why, of course. Beveridge heads division, Silla. Fountain said you ran Washington. I do, but once we began to swell, it was determined to move headquarters far away. Beveridge has lived in England for five years. I mean, actually, he was all but overjoyed when I suggested you return. The prick? Overjoyed? <laughs> I know. Well, perhaps he's mellowed towards you. I never realized how much you hated each other until he started so passionately to court your lovely wife. What's on your mind? On my island, I used to climb trees and chase birds. I miss that. Who am I to delay? We have many experiments going on. One group in California is trying to make cancer contagious. Another group in Oregon is convinced they can make people burst into flames. So the vision commissioned these scientists, and now you don't want the results. These are years away. There are three front runners: Milo Standish, totally loathsome, equally brilliant. <laughs> Standish uses an atomizer identical to this. Keep that if you like. Standish has developed a substance that causes absolute compliance. And what has he been doing with it? Picking up men in Greenwich Village. The fiend. Bigots, homophobes, Republicans. One squirt, they're as good as gold. Then he takes them to bed, even films it for scientific purposes, of course. Of course. Who's number two? J.F. Vaughn, known as Archie after the Pittsburgh baseball player. Retired science professor, Princeton. Is he also working to improve his dating pool? He has a chemical which causes suicide. His most recent test was on his own nephew. A talented lad, by all accounts, he just attained a college scholarship. My God, Mar, do you like your work? It's awful. But it only matters now because of the window for war. Once the front runners are gone, the window will shut and we'll all be safe. Until next time. I still don't know what you brought me back for. There must have been others. Everyone else has a past. Past can be traced. If word got out that we were killing our own scientists, it wouldn't do much for our reputation as an equal opportunity employer. Hmm. You said there were three. We can talk about that when you're back from New York. Big Apple, here I come. Scylla, stay away. From what? Your brother and his wife. They're alive because you are dead. If you visit, if anyone found out, there wouldn't be much left when they're finished. All right, Ma. I wasn't planning on moving in. I said I wanted you to save the world. I never said it was worth saving. Did I ever tell you that this reservoir is full of diamonds? You mentioned it once, but I thought you were drunk. I was drunk. It's also full of diamonds. Really? Whole coffee can full. I was skimming them, actually. Skimming them? Yeah, I got one to bounce five times. Is there also a troll living under the bridge? All right, four times. This is where your story falls down. Diamonds don't bounce. Mm, they do with me. They're the wrong shape. Well, maybe no one's tried it. Throwing diamonds in a lake? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, just remember, if being an internationally famous philologist doesn't work out for you... Jump in the reservoir. You might have to dig a bit, but... Now you're looking at me funny. This job. They want me to go to Europe. When? Next month. You should go. You don't mind? <laughs> it's Europe. Who doesn't want to go to Europe? And for the money they're paying? Unless it's France... I'm not sending you to France. Oh, those corporate bastards. I thought you could come. Me? It's during spring break. Oh, well, then I should definitely come. What? You keep looking behind us. It's nothing. I can see that. You'll laugh. I won't, I swear. I saw her. The droopy-eyed woman. Here? In the supermarket. Did you go up to her? She was in a different aisle. Melissa, listen... Someone only gets followed if there's a reason for them to get followed. And seeing as you're that someone, and secondly, even if there was a reason, the person they would get to do the following would be innocuous. You wouldn't notice them. So 
I suspect you're getting yourself worked up about a comparison shopper. Maybe. But I keep seeing her. It happens. I've had Andre the Giant trailing me all over college this week, but you don't see me calling the cops. Okay. If we run into her in Europe, then we'll know something's up. Look at you, John from Chicago. Maybe this wasn't such a hot idea. Oh, coming up. cut the juvenile panic and make me a drink. Rum and soda, same as the bar? Mm, strong, like you. One drink, Milo, and then, hey. Oh, apologies, I have a, a cleanliness fetish. Is that perfume? Mm, odorless, I promise. Oh, don't get upset with me, beloved John. And uh, stir the drinks. I like my liquor cold. And my men hot. Hmm. To our future. Why don't you get comfortable, John? I am comfortable, Milo. Who wouldn't be comfortable in a spread like you have? Well, at least take off your blazer. No problem. John? Yes, Milo? I know we don't know each other well, but it would mean a great deal to me if you... Uh, please feel free to say no, but I wish you'd put your glass down and take me in your arms. That's not too much to ask, Milo, considering the free booze and all. I never held a man before. My kids, sure, all the time. Have you ever kissed a grown man? Are you serious? Try it. I don't know, Milo. Uh, I I'm rushing things. And please, if, if you don't want to, don't do it. But who did you dream of when you were younger? Ingrid Bergman <laughs> and Grace Kelly. Pretend I'm Grace Kelly, John. Twenty years old and more beautiful than any woman in the world. Kiss me. <clears throat> what a piece of work you are. Now don't do this if you don't want to. Promise? Word of honor. Take off all your clothes. Here? It would just mean the world to me. How about forget about making me happy? Just do what you want. Socks and shoes, too? They're clothes, aren't they? It's just a body, Milo, but if you want to see it, I don't see any problem. Oh. You're perfect. The scar is not exactly great. No, I love it. Now, I know we've only met. Please, it's so terribly important to me for this next event to happen. But as always, the final decision rests with you. John, I want to knee you in the testicles as hard as I can. Milo, that's going to hurt like crazy. I'm sorry. I, I have a sadistic streak. You don't have to do anything. I mean, I did say how much it meant to me, but if you're upset... Hey, I'm not upset even a little. Then you don't mind if I knee you? Well, I can't say it's going to be the highlight of my day, but if it makes you happy... Oh, it does. It truly does. Are you interested in why I want so to do it? To satisfy your sadistic streak, like you said? Mm, partially that. But the fuller truth, my dark beauty, is I think someone sent you to me. Who? John. Please don't go all shy and silent. Is your name John, by the by? Yes. Why are you resisting me over a simple thing like your name? Today. What today? I've had many names. John is the one today. Oh, goody. Tell me some of the others. <sighs> I was born Henry David in honor of Thoreau. My father was an intellectual, Henry David Levy. Well, now. That was neither painful nor revelatory. So why the resistance? <sighs> there it is again. <sighs> Frankly, you are the rudest creature I have ever come in contact with. Here I am, practically begging for tidbits. Scylla. Come again? Scylla was my anonym. I picked it myself. Scylla was a giant rock off the coast of Italy. I like to think of myself as that rock. There was a whirlpool nearby... Charybidus. It was dangerous when you were near Scylla. Oh, so you're dangerous. I don't know anymore. I thought so before, coming up in the elevator, but I've been away. When I got the scar, I died. Everybody thought I had, but the decision was reached. If I could be saved, I might be useful. 
My eyes are the same, but my fingerprints were removed, my lips thinned, and my forehead built up. No one who knew me before will know me now. I've been away on an island gathering strength for when I was needed. And you're needed now? Yes. By? Division. You work for them too? For 20 years. And they wanted you to check up on me, is that it? Use your beauty to insinuate yourself. They wanted me to kill you. Does Perkins know? Perkins gave me the job. Perkins hired me. But you were doing too well. You and Arky. Have you visited Arky? I have delayed him, yes. He's in the trunk of my car. Oh, you glorious creature. How can I ever repay you? I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go to bed together. I'll tie you up. I mentioned that sadistic problem I have. Well, I wasn't lying. And I'll cause you great pain and suffering. And afterwards, you'll go for a swim. Swim? In the Hudson. Would you mind? Just a few strokes, and then stop. Wouldn't I drown? The odds would... Favor such an event, yes, Scylla. With Arky gone, the battle is done. <laughs> I've never been this happy. I'm going to win a double Nobel Prize and make love to a god. <laughs> All my life, I've, uh, I've prided myself on decency and goodness. And here you dispose of my bitterest rival assuring me immortality, and what do I do? I decide to murder you. Oh, what's happening to me? You're dying, Milo. You're about to kill yourself. But I'm so happy. How can you be sure? I took Arky's killer cocktail from the laboratory and I put a drop in your drink. But I, I sprayed you. I know. Perkins gave me an identical atomized bottle to yours, and I switched them in the bar. <laughs> How long will it take? I really want to die, so... I know. Shh. You will. What? I didn't say anything. Fine. Have it your way. Good night. Okay, but you gotta promise not to laugh at me this time. I never went into much detail, right? But once, years back, there was that trouble. When you lost your brother? I didn't lose him. Doc was killed by a German, Sell. Sell was Mengele's protege at Auschwitz, and it crossed my mind. And I, I'm not saying this is happening or anything, but it's just that with all the Mengele publicity these last weeks and his, his bones being found, well, who can tell what that might have stirred up? And there are a lot of weird people in this world. Who knows who might be following who? How could you? What? You thought I would laugh? What? How could you sit there and let me think that I'm paranoid? She's not following you. Don't you don't know that, you son of a bitch. Melissa! Go to hell! Beverage. The grade is A+. Plus. Top form, then. As he was. Let's put it this way. I wouldn't want him angry at me. But is he angry at me? Does he still, do you think, have a, a negative opinion? Do you mean, does he still use the P-word? You two will have to work that out when he gets to London. We're both professionals. Wonderful. I'm briefing Scylla later about our final front runner. We may just win this after all. I'm sorry. Oh, it's ancient history. I was just so relieved by what you told me. <laughs> That's what relief brings out in you. I'm not looking to be around when someone makes you happy. Hush. You make me happy every day. Mm. 
Some days twice. <laughs> you cried out, you know. You were awake? It's been a terrific night for all concerned. It's... It's just the whole crummy Mengele business. Talking about it, it brought back Cell, and... I dreamt about Doc. Hmm. Dreamt I was chasing him along the river. And he wanted me to catch up. He kept smiling. God, it was so real. I thought he was alive. Knew he was. You don't give up easily, do you, Tommy? <laughs> For a long time after his funeral, I knew my father was alive. Weren't you with him? Mm -hmm. I didn't see the body. Not really. He was behind the bed, and there was just this pool of red like paint. I thought he faked it. Why? To test me, see if I was strong. Tommy. <laughs> Doc bought plane tickets, and um, we went to New Orleans where they got engaged, my mother and HV. And we went to the restaurant, and we were talking, and out of the blue, he just said it. It wasn't paint, babe. And uh, I cried so hard. Oh, tell me. I'm the last one left. A package for Mr. Clayton. Thanks. I have put a great deal of thought into your name. This one is forever, so it couldn't be ordinary. I wanted something romantic and dangerous. I wanted a name that would strike, if you will, fear. A name like D'Artagnan, like Captain Blood. If you think it's easy, try it sometime. Elma Snurd. Elma Snurd. Perkins, you absolute... <laughs> Full marks, you old fart. Retribution. That's all I'm thinking about on the way over. Then I see the door. Open. Ma? It's dark. There's a shape on the stairs. A woman. I turn her over. Perkins' sister, Edna. Her face has been completely torn away. Ma? Ma? Savagery. Perkins' face is gone. His arms thrown wide across Felicity's bed as if trying in his final moments to protect her. One hand clenched. In his fist, a few blonde hairs. Felicity is also faceless. Her odor unsettling. I need to go. People will be here soon. If someone came for me here, I may not defeat them, but they would not take me on away. Somewhere in the house, there is a message. Where? Most people don't like going near her when she's like that. Excuse me, old girl. I'm trying to be gentle. There, a scrap of paper. The last five letters Perkins ever wrote. Tring. The high street seems normal. A greengrocer, a sweet shop, a florist, a wine emporium, a butcher, and that's the whole show. I keep going, looking for anything, anything at all. Meadow Close, Betty's Lane, Mortimer Rise, all wonderfully British, all a waste of time, until... This looks recent. Yep. Boiler exploded last night. Ouch. Anyone hurt? I'm British gas, mate. We're just making it safe. That must have been one hell of a boiler. The story makes the local paper. Witnesses say they saw two children playing outside immediately before. But the only body found was the owner of the house, an American businessman named Webster. It's not a good photograph, but I've met him years ago, except he wasn't American, wasn't named Webster, wasn't a businessman. 
Perkins said there were three. Arkey, Standish, and now Webster. Good to see you, Beveridge. Scylla, affection from you is a little, but... I told you to come along. I did. I enjoy hurting you. Take as long as you like. All right. Stand down. I counted four. All stand down. Ah. Oh. Look at you. Nothing recognizable at all. Shall we walk? Yeah, about Ma. His friends called him Ma. He were no friend. What do you know? You've been vegetating for the last century. We were close. We were deep friends. Yeah, sorry. I don't want you getting human on me. I apologize. Well, I'll be brief. Lest we linger in each other's company, I'm sure the better off we'll both be. Go. Ma was murdered by a figure called the Blonde. I hate flattery, but what he is, more or less, is the new you. And you want him retired? Nothing that simple. We need to know who our enemy is, who he works for, but there's a problem. He won't talk. The man is impervious to pain. Do you know where he is? He's very open about that. He arrived in London yesterday. We've seen playing roulette in Belgravia. He loses more than he wins. I think he'd need money, but whoever employs him obviously pays well. Mm. We also have a good idea as to why the blonde is here. One of our chief allies, a senator, is arriving tonight for a week. And he's bringing his two young sons. Won't the children be guarded? Hmm. Guards don't always work. I knew a man once, you won't believe this, but it's true, who had four guards. They weren't much help at all. Room service. Room service. I'm not leaving without a tip. I didn't order anything. My mistake. Oh. Oh. Where are the boys? Oh. You're older than you look. And you are rude. <laughs> you won't be fast enough. We'll see. So what do you use to cut people? You'll see soon enough. I'm guessing right pocket. <laughs> Reach for it again, I dare you. Pain doesn't bother me. <laughs> oh. ah. You sound bothered. It was worth it. See? Custom made. How did you guess? There's a lot of it about. <laughs> Give up now. I'll let you keep your face. No thanks. It isn't mine anyway. <laughs> Old and slow. I plan on getting older. <laughs> Depends how long it takes you to fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too easy. Yeah. What is this? The tenth floor? You're done. Not yet. <laughs> you know, I could just wait for you to drop like ripe fruit, but I'm not a patient man. You know, I always get my boots in London. Place on Bond Street. Very nice. Exactly. You pay for the craftsmanship. Good souls. Good for squashing bugs. Ah. There's nowhere to go. You're finished. So come finish me. Just, just fall already. Getting tired. You're embarrassing yourself. Come here and say that. Here he comes, ten floors up, higher than the trees on my island. There's a pigeon watching us. Do they chase me or am I chasing them? On three. What? Two, three. How did you do that? Practice. Really, a lot of practice. Now it's my turn to squash the bug. Let's get comfy. Who ordered you to kill Perkins? Who? That doesn't bother me. Are you sure about that? Why don't I give you a hand? 
There you go. You're making a nice mess. It doesn't bother me. Oh. Really? Maybe I'll use your scraper to take your face off. I don't care if I die. Sorry, I wasn't clear. You wouldn't be dead. What? First, I'll break your shoulders, and I'll sit you in a chair, and then I'll get your scraper from the floor up here and just, you know, go to work. Work? I'll probably be clumsy, but eventually I'd scrape your face all away, and you'll be beautifully alive when I start. But with the skin gone and all your other features too, probably you'll have a hard time meeting girls. No. And without your eyelids, you won't be sleeping much either. Shut up. You think I don't mean it? I saw what you did to Perkins. You better believe I mean it. I work for Beverage. Really? That is interesting. Just let me go. Let me die. That's what you want? Yeah. We aim to please. Ah. Hey. Hello, Chris. I don't understand. No, but I will. <laughs> let me put a robe on. No, this is how I want you. Shriveled and shivering. Move. Why did you hire me to find out who was paying the blonde when you were paying him? I wanted the two of you going against each other. If he killed you... Of course, I would have wept for days if you killed him. Well, he was becoming untrustworthy. Well, he incriminated you. I thought he had no weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. Yeah, that's right. Your brother, as I remember. What's that got to do with anything? Nothing. I just never thought he'd talk. I wanted to test his reliability. So I arranged for him to shepherd the children. All is set up. I'm surprised you didn't suspect. I didn't suspect. I knew. I don't want to shock you, Beveridge, but I don't believe a lot of what you say. As far as I'm concerned, the truth is a foreign object in your mouth. But not tonight. There's no need tonight. Why did you kill Ma? Ma must have found out about the Webster business and stopped trusting me. Webster? The scientist in train. Brilliant man. And someday the world will know. Ma wanted him gone, but I kept stalling. Tell me about the children. <laughs> Special creatures, aren't they? Hey. Can I at least have a drink? Mandrakes. That was Webster's word for them. After a comic from his growing up days. A magician called Mandrake. The bombs, Scylla. Completely synthetic. They liquefy when they go off and leave no trace. They are the ultimate weapon because no one yet born can find it in his heart to refuse a poor lost child. They can go wherever they want, explode whenever they want, take whoever they want with them. Where are they? Doesn't matter. You're too late to do anything about what's going to come. The bombs will detonate, and no one can stop them. You want war. I want peace, Scylla. This is just how we get there. God damn it, where are they? Tring! Tring, the academy. But you're too late. Hey, how does it feel to be helpless with not one thing in the world to do? You forgot one thing. Doubtful. I can kill you. No one gets in till morning. I've got my orders. Look, I didn't ask to come here. I've got a note from Beveridge. Beveridge. For the chief guard? Come here and have a look if you don't believe me. <laughs> Perkins was right. You can't get the staff. The window to the guardhouse is open. The lights are on. There are maybe half a dozen guards. This could be my lucky... <coughs> Tell me who you work for. Division, I told you. <coughs> Hoffer let me in. Hoffer's dead. Last request. Let me do it. Hoffa was my friend. Help yourself. Last request? Yes. I want you to kill your colleague here. What? Well, at least take his gun away. I'd really appreciate that. <coughs> no! Like that? That was great. Thank you. What the hell? I'm the one who caught this guy. He was squirting stuff all over you from the window. Why are you listening to him? It would mean a lot to me. <coughs> what would? If a couple of your men would take him outside and take care of him quietly, I'd be so much more at ease. <coughs> what are you doing? Stop! I, I, I'm one of you! Stop! Anything I'm... else? I'm sure I can think of something.
All done. What now? Mm. How many scientists are in the house? Just the two. I don't want to impose, but if you could give me your keys and a flashlight, I'd be truly appreciative. I wish you'd ask me something hard. Uh, well, can you get your hands on some kerosene? Are you serious? Kerosene, gasoline, the works. We're very well supplied here. Good. Now be sure and tell me if this bothers you, but what I'd like is for you and the remaining men to get all the kerosene and gasoline you can and go to the basement and spread everything flammable around you can find. I love fires. And then what? Well, when I give you the signal, I want you to light everything. And then? And then you just stand there and watch. Dark. Something moving I can't see. Something touched me. Where's that flashlight? I want to the Chubby cheeked children. Dozens of them. Please, God, I hope they're not set to explode. The stairway is 20 feet away. 10 feet. 5. And then I'm on the stairs. Gotta be quick with all that adorable firepower right below. There's a room with lights on. A big man on a high stool with his back to the door. Reading, I think. He hears nothing. Do you know what's happening? That, that sounded like gunfire. It's a drill. Really? We're on top of the situation. They sent me to tell you not to worry. Thank you. I'll be so glad when... She had nice eyes. Tonight is not the time to worry about the sanctity of division employees. Tonight is a night for obliteration. Is this a signal? Yes. Count to 50 and then have a ball. How long do I have? How fast will a house burn? Will the children catch fire, or will they just... <laughs> Ma would be proud. The window for war is shut. That's okay, I was up. You have a package. They asked me to bring it up straight away. Thanks. A dictaphone. Hello, Scylla. If you're listening, you must be very proud of yourself. Believe me, you've no reason. This is not a triumph for you, but for me. A double triumph, professional and personal. My first over you. Prick. Probably you wonder why I've loathed you all these years. Was it some childhood slight, some psychotic urge on my part? Well, really very simple. I'm a totally competitive human being. I assume you destroyed the children in Tring. Let me assure you, you've destroyed precisely nothing. Those were expendables, defectives. The day after Webster died, that was our test run. We began shipping. There are perhaps 5,000 children now in every country of consequence, all programmed, waiting in closets and cases, in ditches or woods. We go at dawn. The sun is shining, the Thames is glistening, and beyond that, Big Ben is on fire. The Little Bang Theory is now in operation. Within an hour, it's my fervent hope that many of the most crucial figures in the world will be dead. Let's join us at 6.30 a.m. and this is BBC News reporting live on what is the first organized worldwide terrorist attack. Reports no one terrorist organization has the resources to pull off an attack on this scale. Experts speculate that there have now, been... The Russian president is alive, but his injuries are life-threatening. Three of his top men are confirmed it's been dead. Confirmed that the That's Secretary of State awesome. is unaccounted for, coming only minutes after the explosion at the home of the most senior Supreme Court justice. It's beginning at to look the White like White House. 
but the president helicoptering in from Camp David wasn't heard. So Four members what of the Politburo getting out of a limousine were a killed in yet another attack. scientists wiped out in a single explosion at a convention in Switzerland. We'll bring you more As details. As you might expect, there will be more than a little chaos. And from that chaos, peace, Scylla. Webster didn't believe me when I suggested it to him, suggested that his wonderful children could bring peace. So I experimented with getting rid of him, successfully. And do you know why there will be peace? Because Britain will rule the world. Every other country's leaders will be decimated, but Britain will survive virtually intact. The world was at its height when the British were in charge, and they shall be again. You have no children, Scylla, and neither have I. But what a gift to leave to those that do. I am the greatest peacemaker. The only one with will enough to make it happen. And you, you are going to suffer so dearly and so long. My personal triumph is on the horizon. Should be done now, so uh, have an interesting day. Like at least 3,000 bombs have gone off in the last two hours. Has gone up to 4,000 in the last 15 minutes. Story. It's 7.30 a.m. and the total number of explosions is nearly 5,000 with who knows how many more to come. I know. It's almost over. In the United States, 14 senators are confirmed dead. In 14 India, dead. That leaves 86 to fumble on. Reports now of an explosion in a cornfield in Ohio, a mile from the governor's home. So it's the same everywhere. The children are going off too late or too soon. Not all of them, but enough. Destruction beyond anything yet known, certainly. But Beveridge rushed it. Too many crucial people are still alive. We've been lucky. Next time, we might not be. Next time, technology might win when the window is open. And all we can do is gather our loved ones around us and hold them so tightly. Babe is all I have left. And Perkins said it would be dangerous. But the world is dangerous enough, thank you. Hi, Tom and Melissa aren't here right now. Seeing as you ask, we're in London at the Bloomsbury Hotel if you happen to be... What if he's forgotten me? What if he doesn't want to know? After all these years, oh, hi, sure, glad you could stop by, can't chat now. What do I say? I need something to cut through the surprise, the minutes of, my God, I thought you were gone, crap. I need to say something which slays my brother with kindness, something only we would know. Yeah. Say something. Yes. Ah. Uh, say something. I think you got the wrong room, mister. Hey. It wasn't paint, babe. What? It wasn't paint. No. No, no. It's me. Doc. Doc, I knew it. I knew you'd be back. I'm here. <laughs> You, 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 you won't go. Never. Hey, maybe we can all take a trip, the three of us. <laughs> I know you got married. I've been keeping an eye on you. Because you're a spy. I'm sorry. I wanted to tell you. I've only been back a few... I saw you. Where? At the university. Andre the Giant. I don't know what that is. <laughs> you don't know? I've been away. With no TV? Yeah, there was nowhere to plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm back now, babe, and you're all that matters. Oh, damn, I wish Melissa were here. Where is she? Oh, working. Huh? For some huge entertainment company. Huh. She was paid a ton. Oh, you'll love her. She's so smart. Can't be that smart if she's with you. Hey. <laughs> You know, you know, 200 million people went to theme parks in America last year. That's mm -hmm. that's half a billion if you include the world. <laughs> Melissa got called in on this project to help with the accents. Accents? 
Yeah, with well, the kids. See, they've got these kids, except they're not real. It's a gimmick. So Melissa says, you, you pay your money, say where you're from, <sighs> and the kids will talk to you using your accent to make it more real. No. No, seriously. It's, it's huge business. The hours, though. They practically forced her to work through the whole of last night to get some last-minute order ready up and train. <laughs> Hey, 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 come on. Hey, come, come on, you're gonna meet her soon enough. Come on, come here, come here. Hey, come on, it's okay. You are going to suffer so dearly and so long. It's okay now. He was all but overjoyed when I suggested you return. They're alive because you are dead. I need to tell you something. There's no rush. I have to tell you. No, you don't, Doc. It's okay. We're a family again. Nothing matters more than that. Let go of me. What is it? What's wrong? Once I could kill with either hand, <laughs> but you can lose it all. <laughs> and quickly. You can tell me anything. In Brothers, Scylla was played by Tom Burke, Tom by Jack Loudon, Beveridge and Hondo, Liam Brennan, Fountain and Fogarty, Richard Conlon, Cheetah and Tompkins, Finden Hertog, Melissa, Jessica Hardwick, Perkins, Robert Jack, and Milo and the Blonde by Robin Lane. Brothers was written by William Goldman and dramatized by Stephen Keyworth. It was a BBC Scotland production directed in Glasgow by Kirsty Williams. So... So you think you can tell